I posted a video on the basics of pivot tables a few days ago, and I've had lots of people saying, that was great, can we have a part two? So that is what this video is. I listen to you, you see, I'm giving you part two of pivot tables. And there's probably going to be a part three, a part four, a part five, because we could go on forever about pivot tables because they are that awesome. But let's, in this video, just move our skills on a little bit. Now I'm using a reasonably large data set just here. Let's create ourselves a pivot table. I've already got it in an Excel table. Remember, that's very important. So I'm going to jump up to insert. Let's go to pivot table. I'm going to put it on a new worksheet like so. And let's pick up our fields and drag them over here so they're a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to build myself a basic pivot table. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the ship mode down into the rows. I'm going to put the sales into the values and I'm also going to add, let's add, should we add the category above rows? Let's see what that does. Yes. So we've got furniture, office supplies and technology. Then we have the ship mode. So first class, same day, so on and so forth and the sum of sales. So this is sort of pretty much where we got up to in the basic video. I showed you how to move fields around. I'm not going to go over old ground. If you want to see that, then you can take a look through my videos. I posted it a few days ago. So let's move this on and take a look at some other things we can do when we're working with pivot tables. Now, the first thing that I always find myself doing is changing some of these labels and also applying number formatting. So for example, at the top here, it says sum of sales. Now that's fine, but I could change that to something else if I wanted to. So if I double click on this, it's going to open up the value field settings and maybe I want it just to say total sales and click on OK, just to make that a little bit more meaningful. Now, where we have row labels, this is showing us the different categories. So I could double click and change this to category so we know what we're looking at. So very simple to change those labels. The next thing I would probably do here is apply some number formatting because numbers in pivot tables by default are not formatted. So I'm going to right click on these numbers, jump into number formats, and then I'm going to choose, let's go for accounting format. I'm going to take the decimal places down to zero and click on OK. Now, the thing with number formatting is if I was to add more columns into this table, which we are going to do in a moment, you need to reapply the number formatting to each column that you add. It doesn't remember that you've just applied number formatting to this column. You have to re-add it, which is a little bit of a pain, but not too much of a drama. So let's do exactly that. Let's add another column to this pivot table. Now, maybe I want to see the average sales broken down by category and ship mode as well as the total sales. Now, in my original data set, I don't actually have a column that shows me what the average sales are. I simply have a sales column. But not to worry, we can add the sales column again. We can drop that down into values. It's going to do exactly the same. It's going to do a sum of sales by default, but we can now change how we're summarizing this data. So what I can do here is instead of displaying this as the sum of sales, I can right click. I can go into summarize values by and check out what we have. I could do a count of the sales. I could do the average. I could find the max or the min. So if I now change this to, whoops, if I change this to average, I'm now getting the average of sales. I'm going to double click to change this title. I'm just going to remove the word off. We'll just say average sales. And once again, I'm going to right click and I'm going to apply the same number formatting. So accounting format, we're going to take that down to zero. And there we can see what the average number of sales are. So we can effectively add information to our pivot table that doesn't actually exist as a column in the pivot table simply by changing how we're summarizing items. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to close down these fields for a second. What else could I do with this pivot table? Well, I could add in my own groups. And I think I put this in my top five pivot table hacks because I find myself using this all the time. Maybe I look at my data and I think, actually, I want to group these into different things, whatever it might be. For example, where I have the different types of ship mode, maybe I want to make it clear in this pivot table that first class and same day are the premium ship modes and second class and standard class are the budget ship modes. I can apply grouping. 
So all we need to do here is select first class and same day, up to pivot table analyze, and in the group group, <laughs> bit of a weird one, I'm going to say group selection. And notice now I get group one up here. Now, of course, I can rename this. I need to click in the cell and press the F2 key. And now I'm going to change this to premium and hit enter. I'm then going to select the remaining ones, group selection. Let's press F2. And this is going to be budget. And you can see it applies it to all of the different sections of the pivot table. So you only need to do the grouping in the first one. And you can see that's carried through to the office supplies category and the technology category as well. So now I'm also summarizing by these custom groups. I can see that for the premium group, which is just first class and same day, those are the total sales and those are the average sales. So grouping is a really great way of breaking down your data even more. What else can I do with this pivot table? Well, let's click in it. Let's jump up to, uh, let's go to the design tab. What I might want to do here is maybe turn off the grand total. Now I find myself turning off the grand total if I'm going to do things like create a pivot chart, because quite often you don't want the grand total to display in your pivot chart. So in the layout group, we have grand totals and we can turn it off for rows and columns or just off for rows, so on and so forth. Now I only have it at the bottom here. So I'm going to say off for rows and columns just to get rid of that. You could, if you wanted to, turn off the subtotals. So I could say, do not show subtotals. My dog is desperately trying to get in the door here. <laughs> But I am going to show them, but I can choose to show them at the bottom of the group as opposed to the top, which is the default. So if I say show subtotals at the bottom of the group, I now get those subtotals down below. And I know for a lot of people, that's more natural, reading down, having subtotals at the bottom. I'm going to put mine back up to the top just simply because I'm used to that working with pivot tables. I can change my report layout. So the default is to show your report layout in compact form. But I could choose maybe tabular form, which gives me a different way of displaying this data. And it really just moves the ship mode and the groups into different columns and gives it more of a table look and feel. And if I wanted to copy down these categories to all of the remaining blank cells, I could go to report layout and say repeat all item labels to make my table look like that. Now, I don't particularly like this layout, but it is quite useful in some instances. So I'm going to switch back to compact view. Another thing I could do is add banded rows. This helps with readability for your pivot tables. And of course, I could choose to change my pivot table style and pick one from the gallery based off of the theme that I'm using. Or alternatively, if I have to use branded colors, I could create my own brand new pivot table style, which is definitely for another video. So that is part two of pivot tables. We've covered quite a few things there. Obviously, there is so much more that we can cover, but I hope you feel now that your knowledge has moved on a little bit from the first video that we did. If you like this video, then smash that old like button, give me a cheeky follow, and I will see you in the next video.